Game over, groceries. Today we're going inside Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods. Before we do, quick preview. If you guys haven't checked this out, if you don't know what this is about, my name's Matt Ward. I'm an angel investor and startup advisor. I run the Syndicate podcast where I interview some of the top angel investors, VCs, and operators around the world. You can check us out, thesyndicate.vc. This is our blogcast edition, where I've written articles specifically on quite a few different topics from consumer tech to e-commerce, things that I know like and am pretty experienced with, but a big part of this is also building up debate. So now we're making audio versions of our blog post, the ones that are the best, the most awesome that people like. Because you know what? Some people like to read, some people like to listen. And I know that having options is a great way to do both. And this show and what we do is all about gaming algorithms. iTunes is big, podcasting is big. So check us out. And if you like this, check out our real podcast, thesyndicate.vc. You can grab it all of our episodes. You can get in on our expert roundtables and have some fun. But now let's get on with the show. Let's get on with Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods. So in case you didn't realize, Amazon's the most monopolistic, well-positioned marketplace the Western world's ever seen. Last year, they did $136 billion in revenue. They've had double-digit growth year over year. It's unreal. And they haven't even scratched the surface. The U.S. food and retail service industry, that's a $5.35 trillion market with $800 billion plus in grocery alone. That's 40x Amazon's total global sales. Everybody's got to eat. The food space is the future frontier, and Amazon's betting big. On the 28th of August, 2017, for those of you that aren't in 2017 currently, Amazon decided to buy Whole Foods. Consider this D-Day. The world of groceries will never be the same. Here's why. Amazon's been salivating over food delivery for years. But try as they might their efforts, they haven't worked every time. Amazon Fresh had $10 million in revenue in Q1 of 2016. That's chump change for Bezos. And if you missed our previous podcast, that's a little bit on Amazon and how they're killing e-commerce. I would recommend checking it out. The syndicate.vc slash blogcast, and you can get those other episodes as well. Well, let's talk about the network problem. Amazon's a marketplace. Amazon's a network effect. That's the reason why one company runs it so well and becomes so highly valuable. It's their network of third-party sellers and their massive customer base. Amazon was founded by Bezos. Everyone knows Bezos, the Terminator. July 5th, 1994. Since then, the company's fought, elbowed, and bulled its way to market leader success. They're constantly growing. But let's look at what they started with, books. Books seemed easy enough to sell online. And customers like options. Look at libraries. Bezos committed to crushing it with books. Books, books, books. That's all we're ever going to sell. That was the mantra early on at Amazon. Amazon committed, and as they grew and had a more diverse customer basis, oh, wait, some options presented themselves. They started branching into media and digital, and quickly Amazon started morphing into a full-fledged everything store. But the base was critical. They had the customers. They used that demand to pull sellers to the site. With that, the flywheel was born. Imagine if Amazon had started selling everything from day one. There'd be no message for customers. Why do I go to Amazon? And sellers, they'd be confused. It would be chaos all around. Instead, it was systematic network expansion. Today, Amazon's doing the same with Whole Foods. Amazon's existing supply chain structure was lacking. Despite the most advanced logistics network in the world, Amazon couldn't get grocery. The reason is in the nature of the product. Selling widgets is easy. I did it. I built a business. Plenty of people have. One, two, two thousand. It doesn't matter. How much inventory you have or what type of products it is, as long as you can wait long enough, you're eventually going to sell them. That's not the deal with food. With enough money, you're still screwed. Milk spoils. Eggs go bad or break. Bananas, they're blobs after a few days. Groceries have a few days or the business collapses. This is part of the reason that food service businesses are so hard. You need choices. So customers want to choose and without too much stock, because if you have too much stock, it's going to be waste and spoilage and you're in trouble. Amazon suffered this problem for years. They couldn't offer non-perishable. They couldn't offer perishable products online. What do they do if they don't sell? They eat the loss. There's no way they could get brands and third-party sellers on board. What brand wants to sell when there's no demand? Whole Foods solves this. Whole Foods is the most well-known, one of the most well-known and respected grocery brands. Although I'm not a fan, they're a bit overpriced. But you know what? They're fans, they love them. Their health-conscious options and incredible customer service have made Whole Foods huge. 
Plus, Whole Foods has tons of locations all across the major urban hubs. Take a look at your average Whole Foods shopper as well. They're young, they've got money to spend, they're culture and health conscious. This was not Amazon's initial demographic. That means the Whole Food acquisition opens up a whole new segment of the market to Amazon. But it's much more important than that. Whole Foods is a functioning, balanced, profitable network. They produce and buy product and consumers eat it up. They've solved the logistics and inventory problem that Amazon couldn't. That means initial supply and demand are satisfied. That means jackpot. Now Amazon can leverage their vast customer base without risk of spoilage. Here's an example. Let me explain. Whole Foods, let's say they offer three products, bread, milk, and cheese, because everyone needs bread, milk, and cheese. And let's say they're selling 10 of these each week. Okay. Now they're selling 10 a week. Amazon can start listing bread, milk, and cheese online. As customers discover these options, they can start to buy. That's great. Now if Amazon, let's say they want to have three extra units of each product. So now Whole Foods has 13 of each, bread, milk, and cheese. If no one on Amazon.com decides to buy, Amazon slashes the prices in Whole Foods and they liquidate the product. There's no harm done. They sell them off. Maybe there's a slight loss on those last three that they sell. But you know what? No harm, no foul. If, however, they sell out in a day or they sell out quickly, that's great news. Because it means, wait a sec, we, we got rid of this risk on inventory. We were able to sell and now we can start scaling things up. And they scale up slowly, building up inventory in Whole Foods, mitigating the risk by first proving out demand. And if the bread, milk, and cheese are bought too slow, Amazon can pour free advertising. Amazon is one of the biggest, Amazon's advertising platform is over a billion dollars last year. And they can pour free advertising because they own market. And that drives awareness, that drives sales. This is a phenomenon for Amazon's supply chain. It means they can increase proportionally and create a killer food flywheel, just like they did with retail. There's another problem with food. How often do you grocery shop? If you're like most Americans, it's about one and a half times a week. You get in, you get out, and you spend on average 41 minutes. I'll bet you buy pretty much the same stuff each week too. A gallon of milk, a tub of yogurt, half a pound of ham, whatever. Then you add a little inspiration based off of your cooking plans, maybe a treat or two when you check out. One major reason online groceries take so long to take off is the all or nothing nature of food. If you can't If you can only order half your groceries online, would you? I bet you'd say yes. But you'd quickly discover that driving to the store to pick up the other half is just as painful and hardly saves any time. That means online retailers like Amazon must offer everything your family wants to make it work your while. Otherwise, you're still wasting the same amount of time going to the store. Previously, this was impossible due to the spoilage problem. Now that Amazon solved that, game on. And it gets even better. AI, Alexa, and automated ordering. Subscriptions make sense for everyday products. You're picking it up every week at the store. Why not get it delivered automatically and save the hassle? That's what Amazon's acquisition will soon do. But the ordering interface online still sucks. People like walking down the aisles of a grocery store for inspiration. And searching online isn't ideal for food discovery. But with Alexa and AI, this won't be a problem. Imagine reading off a list of ingredients. You've got your recipe. Amazon cross-checks all of your existing kitchen supply. It adds anything on there to the list. You need a pound of chicken? Check. You need a tablespoon of cinnamon? Check. Amazon adds everything it needs. Of course, the Amazon Basics version if they can. And then they ship that bad boy to you. No problem. Plus machine learning? That learns your preferences fast. Imagine a Spotify of desserts or a Pinterest of dinner items that orders itself automatically. Is that the future Amazon's building? I certainly think so. Amazon will win the home. Their e-commerce dominance is untouchable. Check out our previous blogcast for more on this. And their tech's amazing. The efficiency of Amazon is unrivaled. And let's face it, if when you see this master plan, how do you really think that this is not what they're doing? Do you really believe the pieces won't start to fall into place? And there's one last thing we haven't talked about. Amazon's distribution dominance. Despite everything, That's one of the major advantages they get. Amazon has primetime real estate now. Whole Foods has a nationwide network of 365 locations across all major metropolitan hubs in the U.S. That gives Amazon even more distributed, efficient network for their last mile delivery, making it even easier. And do you think Amazon's going to start storing retail goods in Whole Foods? I do. They certainly have. They've started upselling products like Alexa and Echoes in a lot of their Whole Foods locations. 
And they seem pretty committed to a one plus one is greater than two model. And there's one last thing we haven't touched about. You have all of these locations suddenly. Why not put, I don't know, a drone delivery system on top? 365 new locations, drone docking, transport center. Now you have aircraft carriers of greatness delivering product. Maybe that's the future, maybe it's not. Either way, Amazon acquired Whole Foods for $13 billion. The market caps of the top supermarket chains, those dropped $13 billion. In effect, Amazon killed grocery, and the markets made Kroger, Costco, Walmart, all the big boys pick up the bill. The book's yet to be written in the eyes of enterprise, but Bezos is God and Amazon's all-powerful. If they're successful and pull off the strategies outlined here, I see no reason to doubt Amazon's monopoly will be stoppable. It seems Im- it'll be unstoppable. It seems impossible for them to be broken up. And even antitrust, how is that going to work? Because who wants to say no to Amazon? Amazon's so strong, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the next podcast. I mean, think about it. AWS can shut down the internet. It's crazy. And Amazon now is going to own retail and grocery. Amazon is going to own e-commerce. What are your thoughts? We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Is the, flawed, is the logic flawed? Is this game over groceries? What do you think? If you enjoyed this short little blog post, we're a little over 11 minutes now, then I would love if you'd leave a review, share this around, and check out our other podcast, The Syndicate. So if you go to thesyndicate.vc, you can sign up and subscribe for both The Syndicate podcast and The Syndicate blogcasts. Go through there, check it out. We've got some incredible resources for investors, entrepreneurs. We try to make sure I want to make one of the best resources in the world for early stage startup tech. I think that's what's changing the world. And as an angel investor, an operator, and an advisor, that's my goal is to work with the smartest, best companies that are changing the world and to build massive returns for investors. If this is something you're interested in, you want to learn more about us and what we do, the syndicate.vc. If you add a dash subscribe there, you can get on our email list. You can get all of our greatness. You can get in on the not weekly, but twice a month, three times a month roundtables that we're doing. We've done an incredible one on cryptocurrency. We've got one coming up on AI and artificial intelligence related to autonomous and the future of cities. We have another on consumer tech and things like this on the monopolies of Jesus Christ, what's happening when Amazon, Facebook, and Google own everything. It's interesting. It's fun. And if you like this, make sure to tell a friend. Until next time, go make it happen. Cheers.